Friends, in our previous session, we were trying to understand how different type of rocks we have due to different processes that operate inside or on, on the surface. How a rock can become outcrop. We said earlier when the earth formed perhaps all the rocks in the earth all were formed from magma that was entirely of igneous rock. But how then we have sedimentary and metamorphic rocks came? We have learnt that if a rock is exposed onto the surface, brought to the surface and exposed to atmosphere, it becomes outcrop. What will happen to the outcrop? This outcrop is very important for us. Friends, from this outcrop, how we can get a different type of rocks again? We will study. A rock is exposed onto the surface atmosphere. If rock is exposed to atmosphere for a long duration of time, that is to the heat of the atmosphere, there are different gases present in the atmosphere. There is a water vapor, there is a wind on the, these rocks blow over it, rain, all these totally act on together on the outcrop, they may disintegrate them. Disintegrate means they may break this rock into pieces and pieces and pieces or they may decompose chemically alter their composition. Some of the materials can become soluble whatever it may be that outcrop may get weathered weathered materials if lifted from the place where they got weathered. There are several agencies like wind. If we have some loose material, it can pick up them and transport them elsewhere. River or water flowing over this weathered rock surface can pick up some materials and flow away. Water falling on them may dissolve them and carry them in a dissolved form. There may be ice, huge ice mass by virtue of their pressure they may flow, they drag, they push along the, with them. Outcrop get weathered and those weathered materials if transported, if transported, the process we call erosion. What is that? We have a rock that is weathered, disintegrated, decomposed and transported. Then this process is called erosion. There has to be a weathering which produces loose material there should be some agency which can remove them. That process is called erosion. So, weathering we have, we have erosion through process of a transportation and this eroded materials can be deposited. If a river comes, they drop this material and the, from the outcrop, through process of weathering, we have the sediment. This sediment get transported and on the land we have erosion. The transported sediments brought here and we call deposition. A layer first deposited, second deposited, third, fourth like that deposited. 
the sediments those which we have formed brought first were now buried a burial take place if this material is buried under great depth there is a load on them as a result they get compacted there is a compaction what happens materials get compacted due to load of the overlying material as a result of the load higher pressure higher temperature imagine friends i have two candles i bring them together do they join no if i burn them or subject them to high temperature this also becomes soft this also becomes soft and if i heat it further they almost they become melt like not strictly melt melt like very soft material and i brought them they combine they become one unit like that is with the pressure and temperature materials become active and bind themselves this process we can call cementation cementation this is one way there is another way is suppose wait a minute friends yes we will continue if i have this is this is a depression or a lake or something i do not mean that only the rock fragments come there may be some rock fragments come some dust like materials come some dissolved materials come everything come to the site of deposition there are different materials there are some fine materials they are able to bind either in presence of water or in presence of heat or in presence of pressure they become active simple example i give get a bag of cement dry powder it is do they become hard by themselves drop some stones in them do they become hard drop some sand also do they become hard no if you expose the cement for a longer time open to air they absorb moisture over a time few months it become hard cement hard loose material become hard because in presence of water in a concrete what we do we add water sand aggregate rock fragment larger fine powder what is binding the sand and aggregate it is the fine material cement this binding capacity of the cement is a function of their size that is if you crush a material smaller 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 at a particular limit they become so their physical or some of their properties electromagnetic properties etc change change therefore they acquire a special property binding capacity is similar friends i know this is made up of several atoms do i get that energy from this rock atom has so much of energy do i get that much of energy from this rock no friends if i am able to separate that atom then 
I get that energy. Energy it is there already. But when I bring that material to that kind of small size, it has the ability to produce that much of energy by virtue of that property. Similarly, when I say cement, it is nothing but a gypsum, limestone, powder, that is all. Mix it. We have more, uh, in our previous session said gypsum, how I can use it a binder. Cement is another material. Naturally, in a ground, how the rock becomes strong, loose fragments in the river bed, you must have seen. There are fragments of pebbles, there are small sand like particles, there are clay like particles, they form a rock. Once upon a time, loose material now became a rock because water was there that made those fine particles to get activated and then that particle is now able to bind. They become a rock. And this property is dependent on the size because if I bring some rock aggregates and some sand put together, do they become hard like a concrete? Not at all. Because I have to add cement that will able to bind. In a concrete, purpose of adding sim, uh, sand and aggregate is different. I tell little later, the cement is an active binder. And its ability to bind depends on how fine it is. Therefore, friends, what is a simple test for our cement? Fineness of the cement you say, the more finer, more act active binder. Simple test for cement. Means, in the nature, we have in a depositional site, there are sand like material, there are fragments, pebble like material, there are fine clay, silt like materials. In presence of water, this is silt and clay like materials able to bind the sand or fragments or pebbles, etc. This process of combining, binding, cementing the other material by fine material in presence of water is called cementation. Cementation, this process, we can increase its ability, efficiency. In the concrete, we add gypsum. In the nature, it is a temperature, it is the pressure that makes them active binder. Therefore, in the nature, in a pond or a lake or a sea, there are fine materials under the influence of pressure as the pressure increases, temperature also increases, these fine materials are now able to bind this. That process, it is a little more complication as just I say not enough, little more details we take up later at this stage, this is enough. As a result of burial, accompanied by compaction, accompanied by cementation, this is once the loose rock become hard rock, loose material become hard rock, we call sedimentary. And it is also called a secondary because this was the first rock from that outcrop formed, from that sediment formed, from that this rock formed. People also call this as secondary. Because this is formed from sediment, we also call sedimentary. Sediment means something which is loose material. It is available for transportation, something loose material. Anything that get deposited from suspension in a lake like, a pond like or a sea, and those loose sediments become hard rock, we call it a sedimentary rock. In simple, rock formed from 
loose sediments we call sedimentary rock. Fine friends, I have a deep great sea. I have a sediment, I have sediment, I have sediment, sediment, hundreds of meter depth I have accumulation of sediment, 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 sediments like what may happen here as the depth increases pressure, pressure, pressure increases. So, very high pressure may result here. So much high pressure along with that pressure temperature can also increase with pressure temperature also increases thermodynamics we know yes temperature also increases pressure also increases at that high pressure high temperature even once upon a time this hard rock can undergo further modification such that I have that shown if this was the particle or a material fragment high pressure and depending on the pressure materials may get flow along with the temperature this become more easy we have discussed in a previous session. Thus once upon a time it is a sedimentary rock if subjected to deep burial where at depth high pressure, high temperature prevail because of that high temperature and high pressure this rock can undergo modification in their physical form, physical habit. We call morphology, metamorphic, meta means change, morphic in their morphology. The original sediments which were like this now become like this at this depth therefore there is a change in the shape of the particle if in a rock there is only uh, sorry Suppose suppose I have a big unit, there are so many fragments in the sedimentary rock. This is a rock which is made up of sediment like this. There are some small minute particles clay like which there are like this. This is the rock sedimentary rock. And if this is subjected to pressure and temperature or pressure alone temperature or combination of these what may happen if that rock now is completely made up of the same all or elongated all or elongated 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 now you see originally they were haphazardly not oriented at all they were haphazardly present now they are almost parallel to each other their morphology changed? Yes. Now, it was very difficult for me to break because there was no orientation. Now, it become easy for me to break along. If I apply pressure, I can cut along this, cut along this. Their property changed. Thus, such rocks whose property is changed and due to change in shape of this material morphological change they have a different property now due to pressure and temperature 
we call metamorphic rocks. Friends, we have igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. What happens if sedimentary rocks are formed? There is no more further deep burial. We have we have a basin only few layers deposited, no further deep burial at all. Obviously, not enough pressure, not enough temperature and only moderate pressure and temperature, those formed a rock, but not much high pressure developed. Therefore, there is no question of a further change, no question of metamorphism. If that rock is lying there for a longer time interval, there may be say some soil cover etc. or something. If this rock remained over a long time in the same place, possibility that they get eroded. Now this rock came in contact with the atmosphere, therefore sedimentary rocks can also get exposed, become the outcrop. That outcrop can weather, form sediment and form sedimentary rock, a kind of cycle sedimentary rock become again and again sedimentary. How do I know? Wonderful, no? Sedimentary rock become recycled. What will happen during recycling? Suppose I have a rock disintegrated, transported and deposited here during their transported such angular fragments become by virtue of they become a rounded, more or less rounded. And such rock it is. If this rock become outcrop and then exposed, undergo weathering, erosion, transportation, deposition, then form the sediment rock. It was already somewhat rounded, now become beautifully rounded. So, if it is a second cycle, it become much better rounded. It is not only that, during transportation what happens? A denser material is left behind, a lighter material is transported further. Then city wise separation also take place, size wise separation also take place. Plus, during transportation, their size also become better and better rounded. Now, that become an important parameter for me, whether they are recycled or first only one cycle from igneous outcrop and sedimentary rock. Or sedimentary rock became outcrop, again become sediment and formed several cycles. It is wonderful, this is several cycle of transportation, erosion, weathering, etc. build a material, perhaps in one cycle denser material must have been accumulated somewhere. In the second cycle again denser material added, third cycle denser material is added. Those denser materials one day become good deposit. We have Along Kerala coast, we find so much of energy minerals, monazite we have, ilmenite we have. Are they found just one day? Several cycles, cycles, cycles. Every time it brought some heavies, they left. Next, once again they brought some more heavies, they left. Next cycle, some they brought some more heavies and left. Over a year, now that accumulation, so wonderful, no? nature is providing wonderful energy, minerals. This is sedimentary process, if they undergo several cycles, friends, that also build resources for us. Recycling 
also add to our resources not only for the different type of rocks. <coughs> Thus friends, sedimentary rock can get exposed, become outcrop and sediment and then form the sedimentary rock or without becoming a outcrop they may undergo directly metamorphism. Metamorphism happened if this metamorphic rocks if not subjected to further process what may happen? This metamorphic rocks if not subjected to further process and get exposed I have said previously how, how the outcrop happens. This metamorphic rocks if get exposed that is if we have a metamorphic rock here at a depth, if this is the ground, we have so many other soil cover etc. If this soil cover is removed, this metamorphic rock now exposed to atmosphere. So, metamorphic rocks can also become outcrop if they are exposed. This metamorphic rock, once they expose law, that is anything that is exposed has to be subjected to atmospheric effect so long as materials are buried under depth below the sea water if they are deposited they do not directly come in contact with the atmosphere. Yes, we have seen how the outcrop can become a sediment, a sediment can become a sedimentary rock and sedimentary rock become metamorphic rock and the sedimentary rock can become outcrop and again become recycled into sedimentary rock, how they build and become another resources and how to identify whether that rock has undergone different cycle of sedimentation. Now, similarly, can metamorphic rocks also can be recycled? Can they become outcrop? Can they become re-metamorphosed? Yes, if we have a metamorphic rock at depth, metamorphic rock at depth, if the material above them, if removed, if they are exposed, directly to the atmosphere, metamorphic rock can become outcrop. Once it become outcrop, again weathering erosion transportation, no, no sediments form metamorphic rock. So, metamorphic rock via outcrop, via sedimentary process can become metamorphic rock if buried or Metamorphic rock themselves once again undergo cycle among themselves. How? That is, if we have a metamorphic rock, say I have the ground here, if I have a metamorphic rock at a depth, there was some amount of pressure and temperature. If this rock now under some pressure and temperature condition by due to some reason if the materials above them are removed by a process of erosion. Now, you see they are at a different pressure. Now, the, sorry, the ground is here, this is the metamorphic, a lesser pressure. Earlier ground was here, a higher pressure was there. Now, lower pressure and lower temperature. Obviously, according to that pressure and temperature, they undergo modification, but this time it is not that high pressure. They were in high pressure, now brought to a different pressure temperature, a lower pressure and temperature condition. We call them retrograde metamorphism. Friends, it is common. A person born and brought up to certain level in Europe or England or some other country and brought to India, you find there is a change in his food style, cloth, living style, there is a cultural modification. 
although it is possible to trace his previous histories. Similarly, although it is subjected to low pressure and metamorphic and retrograde metamorphism, still where from they were and now they are possible to trace. This is a kind of retrograde metamorphism if there is another possibility that a metamorphic rock formed at this pressure and temperature condition if due to some reason there is additional load developed then this rock now subject to additional higher pressure higher temperature then once again this can undergo modification now this is called prograde metamorphism. Therefore, metamorphic rocks can undergo modification either retrograde or prograde metamorphic rocks undergo cycle. Friends, metamorphic rocks if buried at great depth if undisturbed for a longer this long time interval this is the this is the ground condition and these are the metamorphic rocks and subjected to high pressure high pressure high pressure for a long time what may happen obviously material should melt at that high pressure and temperature and then they can melt and form magma once it is for magma either intrusive or extrusive cycle repeats metamorphic rock can become igneous rock from directly igneous rock without passing into outcrop they can be metamorphosed if they come in contact with high pressure or high temperature without getting exposed to the surface they can undergo that is a magma formed at this depth intrudes here form intrusive rock rock and now if something is removed the less pressure they have then or if due to some reason pressure increases originally igneous rock now they may have come in contact with some kind of fluid some kind of temperature pressure undergo metamorphism modification even igneous rocks can undergo metamorphism without passing through outcrop and sedimentary system. Thus, we have metamorphic rock, igneous, then metamorphic, metamorphic to metamorphic or metamorphic, igneous, outcrop, sedimentary system, sedimentary rock, metamorphic. There is a cycle. Wonderful friends, yes, we have this rock cycle. But what is the prevailing law? What are the chances of they undergoing this kind of cycle? Friends, in my diagram, this is the earth surface. Anything below the earth surface you find either magma or metamorphism or sedimentary rock formation, all these operate below the earth surface at certain depth rock forming process take place at a depth. If we do not disturb, rocks can form, form, form. People in loose terms say rocks grow. A different rock form, form, form. If it is above the ground, obviously they have to undergo weathering process. That is, the general rule is that if this is the ground, this is the ground, if it is the sea level, anything get deposited below sea level, obviously they are not exposed to air atmospheric effect. There is no question of their weathering, no question of their transportation or removal, etcetera in a normal sense I am talking friends 
attain advanced level, they can even under from here they can go deep. There is a possibility of transportation. And there also possibility of some, but at this level I try to say materials get deposited under water generally do not have chances of getting eroded. They may get eroded means from material from here to here they can get transported possible. We do not preclude, but possibility. So, below sea level always there is a deposition above the sea level materials are always exposed to atmospheric effect. They have to be subjected to weathering and erosion transportation process. Therefore, sedimentary rocks below it anything have chances to become rock and metamorphic rock like that and materials on the surface have to undergo weathering and erosion process. This in nature is happening over millions or billions of years. Thus, the rock cycle involves this process of a transformation from one to other type of continuously going on. In this process, even magma can also be recycled, igneous rocks are also can be recycled. Example, first time when earth cooled formed a rock, we call first formed rock that become intrusive or extrusive, that become an outcrop, outcrop become sediment, sediment become sedimentary rock, metamorphic rock and magma form. There was a first formed rock, now from the metamorphic rock magma formed, that magma also solidify from the igneous rock. I have one igneous rock formed directly from first formed magma, second set of a rock formed from this rock. Can I distinguish this between? So, therefore, my classification of first formed do not hold good. It was true perhaps 2 billion years ago. Now, not the rock in question, I have igneous rock. I do not know how many cycles it must have undergone sedimentary metamorphism and brought to igneous, again brought to several cycle it must have undergone. Still, it is possible to say whether it is the first cycle of magma or igneous rock, second cycle of igneous rock. Do they affect anyway our civil engineering activities? Friends, rarely. For us, anything that is formed from high pressure, temperature, melting condition, igneous rock they have to process such and such properties and our activities totally dependent on the property they possess. But for a resource engineer, a geologist, a scientist, whether it is a first formed igneous rock, second formed igneous rock, etc., is important. Friends, what is the message to you? If magma can become igneous rock and once again it can become igneous rock. Can we mimic that process in the laboratory? Can we produce magmatic rock like in the laboratory if magmatic rock has a high quality whatever all I need for my building construction? Can I get that quality? If I subject a sedimentary rock or metamorphic rock, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, melt them in the laboratory and get igneous rock, do I get similar properties, all properties? Question. It all depends on what kind of material I use. Nowadays, you heard synthetic granite used for facing etc. Beautiful texture, colored rocks. 
even igneous rocks we can produce. What he produced? Mosaic tiles, similar process. Can we not produce igneous rocks of our interest? But quality differs depending on the time factor. I am applying that much of pressure, that much of temperature and the kind of material I use. Therefore, 100 percent naturally available igneous rocks like it is very difficult economically to get in the laboratory. What we want to conclude? To say that these resources provided by nature, I can apply my technology, I can get, but may not be that better quality. Often it is possible to get even better quality, rarely. So, whatever the nature provides is a kind of ultimate source. At the most, I can do some engineering and add on value. Thus, let us go further, more detail into it. It all depends on the type of rock, the more detailed properties of the rocks, etc. Friends, we shall move to our next slide. Thus, just to summarize, we have igneous rock. Now, igneous rocks, we have intrusive and extrusive rock. I have shown that in our previous slide. Intrusive rocks, if this is the earth section, is the crust, those may be at this depth, we call plutonic. Those which are lying close to the ground or on the ground, we call extrusive rock. They reach to the surface exposed to atmosphere. They are called volcanic rocks. Magma may solidify here from the plutonic or deep seated. Plutonic means nothing but a high pressure. High means how much? It is a relative term. It is no doubt a relative term. As the raw depth increases, pressure here, pressure here, pressure here mounts. But if I go a much deeper, further increase in the depth do not matter. Insignificantly, there is increase in pressure. And because of pressure from the sides also become equally important, such pressure in some way similar to hydrostatic pressure. What is that? If I apply pressure at one point in the fluid, it is uniformly distributed, equal pressure develop everywhere. That is uniform pressure. We call uniform pressure or hydrostatic pressure. So, at that depth anything rock forms, that we call plutonic. What do you mean by plutonic? High pressure and high temperature, pressure is such that it is uniform from all the direction. What happens if pressure is uniform in all the direction? A kind of a compression, pressure from this side, this side, this side, this side. Rocks are subjected to or individual particles, atoms are subjected to pressure from all the side, a better compaction take place. That is a plutonic. It is formed at a depth. It is on the surface, there is no pressure from above. This is another type. There is an intermediate in between, neither that side nor this side, hyper abyssal, moderate depth. That is Therefore, igneous rocks also can be classified into hypabasal rock, moderate depth, also possible. We will study more them in at a little later. At this stage, this classification perhaps suffice for our requirement. Summarize, 
we have igneous rocks formed from magma depending on where they form they can be plutonic they can be volcanic x2 zero formed on the surface they can be intermediate we call them hypa abyssal h y p a a b y s s hypa abyssal so intermediate in between hypa abyssal rocks they have character in between yes but they are also intrusive rocks they did not reach the surface in terms of property intermediate but in terms of mode of origin they have not reached the surface therefore we can have two fold classification or three fold left to us igneous rocks can also be classified based on SiO2 content what is the significance of that SiO2 composition is suppose this is the crust section crust only not talking about the mantle and core suppose a material started formation magma formed it is moving up moving up and may solidify here magma formed here ultimately it is a thick pasty liquid i was giving several times example of candle burning it is not 100% as fluid as water we know candle i burn it become melt it liquid liquid like it can flow but it is not like a water okay it is a viscous fluid so this magma if is trying to move up during this movement what may happen some <coughs> some denser materials may be left some lighter materials may move better obviously the rock if formed here rock if formed here rock if formed here should differ depends on the materials they carry accordingly i can classify accordingly they can determine the properties of the rock sio2 that is silica silica is sio2 is one parameter which i can depend easily that determines if a rock which have this much range i call acidic they give some kind of property to the rock if it is in this range i call intermediate neutral is not a better word some old textbooks still refer leave it out basic igneous rocks generally not 40 it is even we can classify ultra basic less than 45 it's a range leave it at this stage okay so ultra basic basic intermediate or acidic like we have different type of rocks it is purely based on silica content that determines the composition and the property ultimately those two are important for us for civil engineers therefore people even do follow this kind of classification for igneous rocks this is a basic necessity to study them further in detail friends sedimentary rock again we are summarizing those which are clastic we have said fragments which are insoluble and those which are soluble can be chemically precipitated or organically precipitated chemical precipitation requires change in pressure temperature physical environment get chemical change precipitated simple example i give you take a bucket of water or bowl of water add salt to it dissolve it 
it is nothing salt solution evaporate it evaporate it evaporate it water escape now material get concentrated 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 and salt deposit it is nothing but change in the water content evaporation concentration similar way sedimentary rocks are found there is no organic activity we call inorganic also possible organic activity we will see how organic activity also act friends we have seen how the rock cycle how broadly rocks can be classified into igneous and sedimentary metamorphic comes later and then how broadly we have extrusive and intrusive also we can have hypabysal how broadly they can also be classified based on the composition and then how sedimentary rocks we shall continue our discussions little later